If you would, open your Bibles uh, with me to Isaiah 49 again. And I say again because over the last few weeks, we have looked at this a number of times. And this morning, I want to talk to you about believing and receiving the love that God has for you. And this is a very, very important subject with, with, in light of all that we have endeavored to pour into your life where your identity is concerned, the courage to walk in who God created and made you to be, the greater grace that we believe to God to manifest in our lives today. You know, in order for us to receive this great has for us, you have to receive the love that God has for you. And sometimes when you think about it or when you have a revelation or an understanding of how important you are to God and how much God loves you, you know, the enemy will come and he begins to tear you down by pointing fingers at you and showing in your out, your, the negative things that you have done in life and the things that, that really to God that don't matter, but that when you receive God's love for you, then it literally changes how you view yourself and you really begin to walk in your true identity and your true person who God created and made you to be. And not only will your life be changed, but you get to change other lives as well. In Isaiah 49, once again, he says, uh, verse 13, Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. Break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people. And will have mercy upon his affliction. Whenever God shows you mercy, he shows you his loving kindness. And God said he will have mercy upon his afflicted. That God will show you his loving kindness. And, and because God is extending mercy to you, it's because no matter what you have done, good or bad, that God will show you his love. That's God's mercy on your life. He gives you, you, know, you may deserve to be punished, and you may deserve to have bad things happen to you, but because of God's mercy, those things won't happen in your life. God will extend grace to you where you will receive something that you cannot earn and you don't deserve no matter what you do in life. And so God says he will have mercy upon his afflicted. Somebody say, have mercy on me, God. Mercy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so he said, but Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. He said, the Zion, Zion is the church. And he said, the Lord has forsaken me and the Lord has forgotten me. Now, here's the children of Israel. They had been gone into captivity, into Babylon, and they were there for 70 years. And God begins to turn that situation around and to bring them out of captivity. He begins to tell them that, hey, I'm about to bring you out of captivity. You went into captivity because of your own doing, things that you did wrong. But God says, I'm going to bring you out of captivity and begin to share with them how he was going to do it and how it was a glorious time for them to start singing, start shouting, stop praising God. You're about to come out of your bondages that the enemy has put you in and what this is their response to that. It's not going to happen for me. God doesn't know me. God has forsaken me. God has forgotten me. I don't even know if God knows my name. I don't even know if God knows where I live. Does God know the things that I'm in presently? That was their response to God said, sing. I'm about to deliver you. But God, you don't know how long I've been in bondage. You don't know how many years my family has gone through this. He said, God has forgotten us. He has forsaken us. I hope I'm not talking about nobody in here. But I believe that it's sometimes in your life when things happen to you, everybody has felt that. Does God see me? Does God know what is going on with me? Does he see what people are doing to me? Do he see what is going on in my life? Has God forsaken me? Has God forgotten about me? Is there something I've done to not make God come? They said this is how they felt about that. And not all of us has felt this way one or another. But here's God's response. Can a woman forget her sucking child? That she should have, not have, compassion on the son of her womb. He says, yea, they may forget, yet I will not forget you. 
Behold, I have graven you upon the palms of my hand, and thy walls are continually before me. Now, I want to read this to you in the Message Bible. Let's look at another translation. We've looked at the King James Version of this. I pray this works. Hallelujah. Isaiah. <clears throat> yes, it's working. Thank you, Jesus. 49. <laughs> Glory. Verse 13 in the Message Bible. He says, <clears throat> Heavens rise to the roof. Earth wake the dead. Mountains send up cheers. God has comforted his people. He has tenderly nursed his beaten up, beaten down people. Anybody ever been beaten up or beaten down? Just two of you. Anybody ever been beaten up or beaten down? Whether it's a family member, whether it's your spouse, whether it's your teacher or co-worker, somebody off the street had the nerve to say something bad about you, don't even know you. Anybody ever been beaten up or beaten down? Okay, he's talking to us. He said, heaven raise the roof, earth wake the dead, mountains send up cheers. God has comforted his people. He has tenderly nursed his beaten up, beaten down people. But Zion said, I don't get it. God has left me. My master has forgotten and I have forgotten I even exist. He says, can a mother forget the infant at her breast? Walk away from the baby she bore. But even if mothers forget, I never forget you. Never. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, God will never forget you. Say, he has not forgotten you. It says, look, I've written your names on the back of my hands. The walls you're rebuilding are never out of my sight. Your builders are faster than your wreckers. Hallelujah. God will build you up quickly better, and then they can build, break you down. I'm telling you, the moment they start to break you down, God is there trying to build you up. Every situation you ever face in life, sometimes we don't, we're not aware of it. We're not fully aware of God's presence that is in our lives. Believe me. The moment that people start to beat you down, to wear you out, or to discourage you, or to cause you to be something other than you're not, God has already have a plan of action to build you up. Hallelujah. And he said he will build you up quicker than they will build you, break you down. Hallelujah. God is always there for you. He know how can he not know you exist? He created you. God knows you exist. He's there for you. And he says, the, delim the, um, the demolition crews are gone for good. Look up. Look around. Look well. See them all gathering. They're coming to you. But God says, they're coming, but God is gathering you to himself. And I love the way that God expresses his love for us. And he equates it with a nursing mother. You know, can a nursing mother walk away and forget that she has a nursing baby? Can you have a baby and walk away and forget you had it? Even if you had a child and you gave it up for adoption or whatever the case may be, you still have remembrance of having that baby. No matter how much you try to forget, you cannot forget you have that child. And that's how much God loves you and I. He says, even that mother, she may forget. But God says he will not and cannot ever forget you. God loves every single one of us. And God has done everything that he has to show you his love for him. And the enemy is doing everything he can to show you that God doesn't care, that God doesn't love you, that you don't exist, that you don't matter. And God has done everything to tell you that you do matter. And I'm here to tell you over the next few weeks that you do matter to God. He, you matter so much that he gave his life for you and he loves you so much. And things that are happening in your life, I'm telling you over the next few weeks, things 
things are about to turn around in your life. Things are not going to be the same. They will not be the way they were. Things are about to turn around for you. When you recognize and have a revelation of the love of God, it doesn't matter anymore what anybody does. You know that God loves you, and as long as God loves you, you have the ability and the power to overcome anything that the enemy is coming against you with. It just takes a download of baptism of the love of God that will allow you to see yourself in another light. God loves you, every single one of you. And he wants you to know and experience his love. And God wants every one of you. Listen, it's not sometimes we think about God's love based on how other people are treating us and how other people have treated us or the love of a natural mother or a natural father. There is no human being on the face of the earth that could ever love you like God loves you. There is no comparison to God's love for your life. They may have treated you wrong. You may have had some that treated you good, but nobody could ever do you like Jesus. There's nobody that will be as good to you as our God wants to be good to you. And listen to me, you ain't seen nothing yet. God wants to be so good to you that it will change the way you think about yourself and the way you think about other people. And you're going to experience the love of God that he has for you and take you to another level in your life and experience in an encounter with God that you would experience his love that he has for you. He, he desires every single one of us to experience that love. So can a, can a nursing mother forget she's nursing a child? Almost impossible. But even though she may forget, God will never forget you. Another translation said that God has tattooed you on the palms of his hand. You are forever before the face of God. Psalms 115 said God's thoughts are always for you. He's thinking about you all the time. Every moment, every second of the day, God is thinking about you. Not just your neighbor, he's thinking about you. You hear me? God is always thinking about you. Guess what? You always have an audience with God. You just say his name, God shows up. I mean, God is always thinking about you. You're always on the heart of God. You're always on the mind of God. You are the apple of his eye. Hallelujah. God loves you. And my Bible says it's an everlasting love. You can't quench God's love for you. You can't be evil or bad enough that will make God not love you. He already decided to love you, and there's nothing that you can do about it. God loves you. Get quiet on me now. Because sometimes we think that God loves us based on how good we are or how much of the word we keep or we try to do. And so if we do good, God will love us more. If we do bad, God doesn't love us anymore. God loves you, unconditional. His love is what we call agape love. It's unconditional love. That means his love has no conditions to it. It doesn't matter how good you are or how bad you are. God already decided before you were ever in your mother's womb, he loves you. And it is that love that he has for you that will cause you to come to a place where you can experience his love regardless, I should say, regardless of what your present circumstances look like. God loves you unconditionally. That means there's no conditions to his love. He doesn't say, if you do this, I'll love you. It doesn't matter what you do, God loves you. And when you receive his love, it changes you. It changes how you look at yourself, how you look at other people. And you begin to walk with a sense of strength in what you have been called to do, knowing that God has not forgotten you, God, you do exist to God. God is always there for you. It is true. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Even when you can't feel his presence, you know he's there because his love is so strong in your life. And you're so assured of his love. And over the next few weeks, I want you to be assured of the love of God that he has for you. So no matter what challenges you face in life and no matter where you go in life, knowing that God is there for you. And he'll always be there for you. 
Don't let the enemy talk you out of his love. I know that there's some tragic things that have happened in all of our lives. If we could just, you know, rewind the clock and erase some things in our past and some things that we have done or things that other people have done to us. I mean, if we could do that, we could. But listen to me. Our, my God, he says in Hebrews 13 that God is the same yesterday, today, and he'll always be the same forever. And God has the ability, because he lives in eternity, that he has the ability, there's no time in God. And so what may look like something that damaged your life in the past, that God is able to go in your past and take away the sting of whatever you've done or whatever anybody else has done to you and it cause you to position yourself just to receive the love of God. And so that your past has no longer has any strongholds on your life that you are free to love and be loved. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I want to be free to love and be loved. And I first received the love of God. Hallelujah. It's a, it's a walk of faith. I said we, we're talking about believing and receiving the love that God has for us. It takes our faith to believe that God will love you. Yes, you, me. Do you know what I've done in life? Do you know what I've been? Yes, God loves you. God loves you. Every one of you, just the way you are. Tell your neighbor, say, God loves you. Everybody watching by stream, live stream, God loves every single one of you. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. We receive your love. Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14, King James Version says, For this call, Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus. And he's praying for them. And he prays for them. He said, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Then listen to me. Christ coming into your heart by faith. And when he comes into your heart by faith, you'll be rooted and grounded in love. And when God comes into your life, that's the love of God. How many remember the day you got born again? And God, and you asked Jesus to come into your life. How many felt like the weight of the world just came off your shoulder? Just a few of you, not all of you. How many... Praise God. Hallelujah. How many just felt like it was a new day? Thank you. None of the circumstances in your life really changed, but you knew something on the inside of you changed. Hallelujah. And so he, he prays this prayer that they would be strengthened with the might in their inner man, that they would be rooted and grounded in love, and that they would be able to comprehend, verse 18, comprehend with all saints, which is the breadth, the length, the death and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. That's a mouthful. That he wants you to know and be surrounded by his love, that you would know the length, the height, the depth, and that you would know uh, the breath of God, that, it w that, this, that you would have an encounter or that you will experience God's love that passes knowledge, that passes your human understanding, that you would experience God's love from his terms. Sometimes we compare God's love with human love, how much your mother loves you or your father loves you or your spouse loves you and determine how much God loves you. But he said, I want you to, to understand this love that God has for you and to know his love, to experience that word know is to experience his love that passes the love of a mother, passes the love of a father or a spouse or any relative or any human 
human love that you could ever encounter, that you will encounter love, God's love on a greater, greater degree than you ever have before. Hallelujah. That is God's prayer for you and I, that you will have an encounter with his love. And I pray that any time during the message that God would just cause you to have a downpour of the presence of God in your life and that you will experience his love in a greater degree than you ever have before. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And as a result of that, he said that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. And that's his love. Now unto him that is able to do God is able to do this. Hallelujah. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we even ask or think, according to this power that works on the inside of us. And that power is the love of God. Whenever you experience the power of God, it's because you experience the love of God. Every time you experience the love of God, you will all, the power of God will always show up in your life. And God says he's able to do this far beyond what you could even ask or think because sometimes our human uh, understanding gets in the way of us receiving this love that God has for you because the enemy comes and he'll put condemnation on your life. And so you think you're not worthy to receive the love of God, but it has nothing to do with how worthy we are, but how worthy Jesus is. Because God looks at you the same way he looks at Jesus. So when he sees Jesus, he sees you. When he sees you, he sees Jesus. Isn't that powerful? That when God sees you, he sees Jesus. Just think that's being full of the fullness of God. Just knowing that when God looks at me, he looks at Jesus. He sees Jesus. And so he says to you that this is a power that love is working on the inside of us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Hallelujah. And so these scriptures are going to come back to us as well. But God wants us to be filled, full of the fullness of God. He wants you to be full of the love of God. Hallelujah. He wants it to overflow in your life, that it would drive out all the darkness, all the condemnation, all the accusations, all the enemy has put upon you, all the things of your past. He wants you to be full of the fullness of God, and being full of the fullness of God is being full of the love of God. And he wants to fill us up with his love. Somebody say, Lord, fill me up. And so Jesus, he comes, he came to show you and I the relationship, not just that he had with the Father, but the relationship that the Father desires to have with you and I. God, the creator of heaven and earth, El Elyon, the most high God, hallelujah. He wants to be your daddy. He wants to be your father. He wants to have relationship with you. He wants to fellowship with you. Yes, he wants to be with you. I mean, if you think about those times when you were in elementary school and they would choose people to be on their teams to who they can play against, and, and then sometimes, if I don't know if you've ever been in that place where you may have been the last one picked, and you felt like nobody really wanted you, but you just the last one, and they got stuck with you. I'm telling you, that's not God. God wants to be with you. He handpicked every single one of us. Hallelujah. He chose you. He loves you. He wants to be with you. And so Jesus has come to show you the Father's love, to show you the relationship that the Father desires to have with you and I. Turn to John chapter 17. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, I receive your love. I really need this to be like on your lips all week. Just, Lord, I receive your love. I mean, when you really just think about it, you're getting ready to go to work, you wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I receive your love. I just want you to do that all week long. Just every time you think about it, I want you to hear my voice saying, say, Lord, I receive your love. I want you to see what a difference a day will make when you just receive the love of God and not allow the circumstances of life. I mean, even when they're hollering at you, Lord, I receive your love. Hallelujah. It'll take you to another place. Hear me. 
They could be cursing you out, but you'll be in another place. It'll be like water on a duck's back. You'll be in another place. Just say, Lord, I receive your love. I don't care. I don't even, you go to the doctor, you get a bad doctor's report, say, Lord, I just receive your love. I mean, you're believing God for healing and it still hurts to say, God, I receive your love. There's healing in the love of God. There's deliverance in the love of God. Jesus wants you and I to experience his love. He says he wants you to know, to comprehend with all saints and to know the love of God that passes your knowledge, your own understanding. John chapter 17, verse 13, verse 7. Start at verse 7. It says, Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of you. Jesus is praying a prayer. He says, Everything that you have given me, that it comes from you. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from you, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, and I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, everything that is mine is yours, Lord, and yours is mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep them through your name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Now Jesus is praying that the same relationship that he has with the Father is the same relationship you have with the Father. That's, oh my God. Listen to me. You think about the same relationship that Jesus has with the Father is the same relationship that he wants you to have. Not you the preacher, not you the pastor, not you with the title, but you the person. God loves you. And the same relationship that God has with Jesus is the same relationship that Jesus said, Father, I want them to have this with you, that they may be one even as we are. He says, while I was with them in the world, I've kept them in your name. Those that you gave me, I've kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled, talking about Judas, and now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the world, that they might have joy fulfilled in themselves. Now he says to them, he says, I've given them the word, the word of God. And I've kept them through your name. And now I'm asking that they would be one even as we are one. And that you will experience a fulfillment of joy. Hallelujah. Just being in the presence of the Father, just being one with God, that you would have joy in yourself. You hear me? Joy in yourself. Knowing that the Father loves you. Knowing that he wants to be one with you. Knowing of the relationship that you have with the Father. He said, you know, he's not only just praying for those disciples, but he's praying for any one of us that would believe on that word that God has given them. And verse, look at verse 14, and now I come to thee, and verse 13 again, and now I come to thee that these things I speak in the world, that they might have joy in themselves. I have given them the word, and the world hate them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of this world. Now, he says, I've given them their word, your word. Now, just think about it. In John chapter 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And we know in verse 14, that word, Jesus, becomes flesh. The word became flesh, and it dwelt among us. And 1 John 4 and 8 said that God is love. Somebody say, God is love. And so, we can deduce that God is his word is love. Every time you read the word of God, you're reading of the love of God. You're reading about God's love that he has for you and I. And he says, Jesus just said, I've given them the word, or oh, I've given them your love. And the world hates them. How many know when you declare that you're a Christian, when you declare the word of God, the love of God, that God loves you, how many know the world hates you? Why? Because the world is full of hate. They don't believe that anybody can love anybody, let alone let God love you, your ugly self. Look what you're doing. 
But he said, the world will hate you. He said, but Jesus said, I've given them your love. Somebody said, I have the love of God. Oh, Jesus. I've given them your word. I've given them your love. And the world hate them because they are not of this world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. And they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Your love is truth. Somebody say, God's love is true. Thank you, Jesus. And as thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also send them into the world. And for their sake I sanctify myself. They also may be sanctified through truth or through the love. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which should believe on me through their word. Somebody say, believe in the love. Yeah. Those that will believe on me through their word, through the love that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in you. They also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. And the glory which thou givest me, you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. Somebody say, God loves me just like he loves Jesus. Somebody say, the same love that God loves Jesus with is the same love that God loves me. Somebody say, God loves me. Come on, let's do it. Say, I receive your love, Lord. I receive your love. Thank you, Lord. He said, that same love that you love, thou hast loved them, that thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou loves me before the foundation of the world. Father, I just believe, I just, I just, I want them to be where I am right now, just in the love of God, knowing your love. I want them to know your love like I know your love. I want them to be where I am because you've loved me from the very foundation of the world. I want them to experience this love. I want them to be where I am to know God's love. You ever tell witness to somebody about God's grace and his salvation and they would tell you things like well I'm not ready to get saved because I got a lot of things in my life that ain't right and I got to get myself together and I don't know if I can do that yet and you know there's nothing they can do to get themselves ready for that they can't stop doing anything that would warrant them a position to receive this love that God gives them freely and you be trying to convey that to them God, I wish they could be where I am right now. I wish they could see their lives like I see it. That God, that you already loved them from the foundation of the world. It was just you just receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then he does the rest. I wish they could see what I see right now. Well, that's what Jesus is praying. Father, I wish that they could be where I am right now. In the love of God, that they would experience your love in a greater way than they have right now. That they would know that that same love that you love me with, that you love them the same. Somebody said he loves us the same. Hallelujah. Because God, he said, you have loved me from the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, the world have not known thee, but I have known you. And these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and I will declare it. That the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. He said that you will experience that you know that God is Jesus. I mean, made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. He's in you. Well, if he's in you, he said that love from God is in you. Somebody said the love of God is in me. The love of God is in me. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5 says the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. His love is on the inside of you. His love for you is in you. And God loves every single one of us. And he loves you as much as he loves Jesus. 
Look at John chapter 15. Somebody said, I receive the love. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. John chapter 15, verse 9. It says, as the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. He said, as the Father has loved me, how many know the Father loves Jesus? So have Jesus loved you. Hallelujah. Jesus loves you with the love of God. Can you imagine Jesus <clears throat> being baptized in the river Jordan by his cousin John. And this is how John knew that Jesus was the chosen one, the Messiah. He said, the heavens were open and you see a dove lighting upon him. Well, the heavens opened when Jesus was baptized. He saw this dove come down and light upon Jesus. But then the Bible says, then he heard a sound from heaven. And he heard the Father say, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well Please. You know the story. Then Jesus is led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the enemy for 40 days. But in the times of temptation, Jesus was solidified in the Father's love, so it didn't matter the temptation that came his way. It didn't matter about the attacks of the enemy. He was sure in knowing who he was, because the enemy came to attack him. Remember, he will come and attack your identity. Every temptation, every um, uh, affliction, every thing comes to challenge who you are. So when the enemy comes and if you be the son, he already he, he knew who is secure in who he was. He was secure in the Father's love. And Jesus said, that same love that the Father loves me with, I love you. Hallelujah. This is my beloved Son, and whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. The same love that God loves Jesus with is the same love he loves you with. Somebody say, it's the same love. Look at verse 13. It says, greater love have no man than this, than a man that laid down his life for his friends. There's no greater love than God has for you, than he to, would lay down his life for you. And he calls you and I friend. Friend is a covenant word. And it's a covenant. It's that agape love in this covenant where it becomes unconditional. That the weight of the covenant is on God to keep his word, his love for you. You are his beloved in whom he is well pleased. There's nothing that you and I could do now to please God. He's already pleased. Hallelujah. He said he's, I know the religious mind can't see that because you know, God ain't pleased with what I'm doing right now. Listen, you don't even understand who God is and who he created you to be. It's nothing that you could do because if you thought that what you're doing is not pleasing God, and so if you stop doing, you think you please God. But God is pleased what you do with it, whether you don't do it, because he saw the travail of Jesus, and my Bible said he's already satisfied. He's already pleased. And when you get a revelation of the love of God, there are things that don't please you that you will stop. Because you know God loves you. Somebody said, I receive his love. Glory to God. Hallelujah.